The next topic is on balance sheet management is uh, on NPA provisioning and asset classification. So to start with, we have seen what is a balance sheet, the components of the balance sheet on the liability side, on the asset side. Particularly, we have also seen how the balance sheet of a bank would look like and the two under the Basel II classifications, we have, we have seen Tier 1 capital, Tier 3 capital, Tier 2 capital and uh, all these things. Now, moving, we have seen the on the asset side, the chunk of the asset is uh, the loan portfolio that, that is the uh, loans and advances given by the bank. So, these loans and advances if for a bank to be healthy, the loan should also be healthy. The, ba the bank will be healthy when the loans are healthy. It means that's why you call it a performing loan or standard loan. But the standard loan will continue to be standard asset, but that depends on the monitoring, monitoring mechanism, surveillance mechanism put forth by the bank. So there are chances the uh, performing asset can become a non-performing asset or also called as impaired assets. So it means the moment it becomes a non-performing assets, it loses the earning capacity. That is, from that asset, the bank will not get any income. So moving to the next topic is asset classification and provisioning norm. In this topic, we are going to cover the following areas. When an advance becomes NPA, the NPA account goes through how many stages or categories till it is treated as loss assets. Between number one is performing asset and it finally ends with a loss asset. Underlying principle for recognition of interest in income on NPA accounts. Provisioning norms for NPA accounts as it goes through different categories of NPA. It means the moment it becomes NPA, it goes through substandard, doubtful. Even under doubtful, there are three stages and finally it goes through a loss asset. From there, it is written off. In line with the international practices, these NPA classifications are followed as per international practices and as per the recommendations made by committee on financial system famously called as uh, uh, Narsimhan committee number one RBI introduced in a phased manner prudential norms for income recognition asset classification and provisioning for advances portfolio of the bank so as to move towards greater consistency and transparency in the published accounts even it becomes NPA it means the chances of recovery for the becomes uh, uh, very remote. So to the extent of that, RBI says that a provisioning is to be done. That is, it's called an impairment provision. RBI has urged banks to ensure that while granting loans and advances, realistic repayment schedule should be fixed on the basis of cash flows with the borrower. That's why normally in case of term loan, we work out debt service coverage ratios. It, from that, we come to know how much the borrower will be able to repay. That's why RBI says that while fixing the repayment, it should be very realistic. This would go a long way to facilitate prompt repayment by the borrowers and thus improve the record of recovery in advances. Once banks uh, disperses advance carefully, monitors it, the surveillance mechanism very good and the loan is technically viable, financially feasible so that the repayment is fixed correctly. There are no chances for this account going bad. Now let us see what is the definition of NPA as given by RBA. An asset including a leased asset becomes non-performing when it ceases to generate income for the bank. It means income generating is taken as the base for classifying an advance into an NPA. The borrower may be very sound, healthy, his uh, industry or his unit may be doing well, his balance sheet may be well, but as long as it he repays correctly, then there is no problem. And the repayment ceases, it loses the earning capacity and from that repayment record only, an account becomes is classified or categorized as NPA. Bank sanctions different types of credit facilities to the for borrowers. It can be fund-based fund facility, it can be non-fund-based facility, even in fund-based facility, it can be term loan or it can be cash credit. And let us see how these different credit facilities become NPA. So we are going to see the circumstances under which the every credit, there are different types of credit facilities, how it becomes NPA. Let us now take the case of first term loan which is supposed to be in term loan, most of the fixed assets are financed by term loans. So in case of term loans, interest and our installment of principal or EMI, the EMI to start with, the EMI, the components of EMI are principal and interest. 
when the uh, initially when the repayment starts the interest quotient or interest portion will be very high the principal portion will be very less as he, he, the borrower keeps on repaying regularly towards the end the principal quotient becomes very high the interest quotient becomes very less so in case of term loans interest and or installments of principal emi remains overdue for a period of more than 90 days in respect of a term loan so a bank wait for 90 days if the if the emi or the interest or the principal which was to come the bank waits for 90 days on the 91st day for non receipt of the small installment the entire term loan becomes a npa it means let us think that the term loan is 500 crores and the emi is only 5 crores for non receipt of this 5 crores the bank waits for 90 days on the 91st day for not servicing of this 5 crore the entire big amount of term loan 500 crores or 100 crores it becomes npa the basic reasoning is that the when the borrower is not able to service 5 crores will he be able to service 500 crores 100 crores of the term loan so on the 91st day the entire term loan is treated as npa let us move on to term loans or uh, a funded facility which is repaid over a period of time then there are facilities like as cash credit secured overdraft which revolves around a limit so the, that's why they are called as revolving funded facilities the accounts remain out of order as explained in the subsequent slides in respect of an overdraft or cash credit facilities it means here the over, the npa category is classified basically based on when the account becomes out of order the moment it becomes out of order then this facilities such as cash credit pledge hypothecation or secured overdraft this turn into an npa so we have seen term loan we have seen cash credit let us move on to the next credit facility type type of facilities bills account fills are self liquidating assets the bill remains overdue for a period of more than 90 days in case of bills purchased and discounted what is the difference between purchase and discounted i purchase a on demand bill whereas a discount a hundi that is it falling due 90 days after sale let us move on to how now we have seen term loan we have seen revolving funded facilities we have seen bills then we'll move on to the agriculture facilities the agriculture facilities the biggest credit facility is crop loan the crop loans are normally divided into short term crop loan crop loan and long term crop, crop, crop loans short term crop loans are normally repaid within a year whereas long term crop loans they are repaid beyond a year so there is subtle difference between these two uh, when when categorizing the npa the short term crop loans the installment of principal or interest thereon remains overdue for two crop seasons for short term crop uh, for, for short term short duration crops migrating long term crop uh, crop loans the installment of principal or interest thereon remains overdue for one crop season for long duration crops so it is in case of short term it is two crop season in case of long term it is only one crop season so let us move on to next facility is called securitization facility this is a facility which has been massively misused in uh, recent global crisis the amount of liquidity facility remains outstanding for more than 90 days so 90 days student should note that 90 days is the watchword anything which the bank owes which the borrower is not able to service in 90 90 days the 91st day the account becomes npa so in case of securitization the amount of liquidity facility remains outstanding for more than 90 days in respect of securitization transaction undertaken in terms of guidelines on securitization dated february 1 2006 now let us move on to the next type of derivatives what is derivative derivatives are instrument which derives its value from the underlying exposure the underlying exposure can be an asset it can be a liability it can be one more derivative so in case of derivatives transaction the overdue per receivables arising out of mtm that is mark to market valuation of derivative if these remain unpaid for a period of 90 days from the specified due date the entire the amount due due to the bank it becomes npa in respect of this derivative transactions even though the loan account becomes npa from borrower's point of view in case the amount due from him is not received within 90 days the bank can classify a loan account as npa only if the interest due and charge during any quarter is not serviced fully within 90 days from the end of the quarter 
here a subtle difference is there from the borrower point of view the 90th day some sum of money has to come the bank waits for 90 days your respective of the 91st day the account becomes npa but while classifying it it is taken as a quarter for the bank even though it continues to be a, a npa from the borrower's point of view for classification for balance sheet or financial purpose it is taken as 90 days from the end of the quarter I again i repeat even though the loan account becomes npa from borrower's point of view in case the amount due from him is not received within 90 days the bank can classify an account, a loan account as NPA, only if the interest due and, and charge during any quarter is not serviced fully within 90 days from the end of the quarter. It can be 30th June, it can be 30th September, 31st December or 31st March. We have seen how the credit facilities are becoming NPA. We have seen the rule pertaining to a term loan. We have seen the rule pertaining to revolving funded facilities, that is cash credit or uh, uh, secured overdraft. Then we migrated to bills, then we migrated to short term crop loan, long term crop loan and securitization derivatives. In case of revolving funded facility that is cash credit, we have seen that when the account becomes out of order, it, it, it slips to NPA. Now it becomes incumbent to define what is out of order status. So we will have to define out of order status for a funded revolving facility. An account should be treated as out of order if the outstanding balance remains continuously in excess of the sanctioned limit or drawing power. It means the cash credit is sanctioned with 100 crore but the excess is 103 crore. Let us think that the account has gone to 103 that is excess by 3 crore. If 3 crores is allowed for a period of 90 days it is not serviced then it becomes out of order on 91st day for non-servicing of 3 crores the entire 103 crores becomes NPA. So I repeat once again an account should be treated as out of order if the outstanding balance remains continuously in excess of the sanction limit drawing power in case where the outstanding balance in the principal operate account is less than the sanction limit drawing power but there are no credits continuously for 90 days as on the data balance sheet or credits are not sufficient to sufficient enough to cover the interest debited during the same period this account should be treated as out of order there are subtle difference here two one one is my account is in excess it means cash credit limit is 100 outstanding is 103 the 3 crore excess continuously in excess for 90 days the 91st day for non-servicing of the 3 crores, the entire 103 crores becomes NPA. The next is that, let us think that the limit is 100 crore, the outstanding is only 90 crore, again a 2 crore interest is debited, so it becomes 92 crores. This 2 crores interest, particular interest, it should be serviced within 90 days, so that the 2 crores, if it is not serviced within 90 days, for 91st day, for not servicing of this 2 crore, the entire 92 crores becomes NPA. There is one more difference is that, let us think that outstanding is 92, 90 crores, interest debited is 2 crores and borrower has service, but he has service not 2 crores in 90 days. So let us think that he has service only 1 crore 50 lakhs, he could service only 1 crore 50 lakhs in 90 days and in spite of that, even though he is remitted, the 1 crore 50 lakhs is not sufficient to cover the interest rate of 2 crores. This account becomes NPA on 91st day. Now let us see what is overdue. Any amount due to the bank under any credit facility is overdue if it is not paid on the due date fixed by the bank. Some amount I have to receive on 1st April. Let us think that 100 crores is the cash credit limit. I have debited 3 crores interest. The 3 crores it becomes from 1st April it is overdue that overdue continues for 90 days on 91st day the account becomes NPA. So again to repeat what is overdue any amount due to the bank under any credit facility is overdue if it is not paid on the due date fixed by the bank. Now let us move on what is the income recognition policy of the bank. The policy of the bank the policy of income recognition has to be objective and based on the record of recovery. That's what again I already told that everything goes back to recovery, recovery only. The, the borrower is sound, his unit is performing well, his financial balance sheet is good, 
but still recovery is not coming, the account slips to NPA. So, for classifying an account in NPA, I only see the record of recovery of the borrowers and not for any other thing. Internationally, income from non-performing asset that NPA is not recognized on accrual basis, but is booked in the income is booked only on cash basis. That is actually I receive. Till such a time the account is performing, the interest are debited on accrual basis under the impression that my borrower will pay before 90 days. But the moment the account slips to NPA, no further I lose my confidence on the borrower and any further in the income I will take only when actually the cash the cash flow takes place from the borrower. So again to repeat, <coughs> the policy of income recognition has to be objective and based on the record of recovery internationally that is including which uh, India also follows international norms. Internationally income from non-performing assets NPA is not recognized on accrual basis but is booked as income only when it is actually received from the borrower. Therefore, the bank should not charge and take to income account income, income account interest on any NPA. This will apply to government guaranteed account also. What is the logic behind this? The account has become NPA. I further keep on debiting interest on that loan account. And when that is not going to come, when the interest is only I am inflating the debit balance of the loan account and what is the purpose of taking that to income account when this is not going to be serviced by the borrower. So it is not a real income. So whatever the, there are two rules here. One the account becomes NPA, no further interest to be charged on the loan account. And let us think that you are already charged thinking that the borrower is going to service but it slips to NPA, whatever that is debited should be reverse bank to the debit of income account. The, again, again, I am telling you the logic behind is that when that he is not able to service the interest, there is no point in taking this to income account. However, some exceptions are there. In, however, interest on advance like is term deposits, my own term deposits because any time I can foreclose and adjust the loan account. NSC, it is a sovereign security, Indra Vikas Patra, Kisan Vikas Patra, I think they are not now in work. Life insurance policies subject to surrender value stipulation adherence may be taken to income account on due date provided the loan account is supported by adequate margin. As long as margin is there for fixed loan against fixed deposit, even though the borrower is not servicing, it can continue to be the 90 days, 90 days norm need not apply. It, can, it will continue to be a performing loan. The, the underlying premise is that worse come worse, I can close the, close the deposit and adjust the loan account. Fees and commissions earned by the banks as a result of renegotiation, renegotiations or rescheduling of outstanding debts should be recognized on accrual basis for a period of time covered by the, covered by the negotiated or rescheduled extension of credit. It, it means the fees and commissions earned by the bank as a result of renegotiation uh, outstanding should also be recognized. It, it is permitted even though I, I restructure it. I think that at the time of restructuring, I still like I continue to treat it as a performing loan. That's why the accrual basis concept is followed here.